Garrett had to leave for home. It's April 11th, 1993, and Cantor is going to tell us his story from beginning to end. Let me just... Cantor, can you start out from the beginning? What is your name? My name is Philip Modell. Is there a middle name? No, there is no middle name. Your Hebrew name? My Hebrew name is Pinchas Ben Ruvain. Uh, when uh, Pe uh, Pesse was my mother's name. And your and father's name? My father's name was Ruvain. Ruben. And where were you born, Cantor? I was born in Posen, which is uh, which was Germany, a city about uh, 100 miles each of Berlin. And uh, lived there in Berlin for quite a number of years. Okay. Let's start out, start out your birth date. My birthday is the 2nd of January 1910. Okay, and your father and mother both lived my, in Posen? They were both in Posen. My uh, father uh, was born there in Posen uh, and uh, was cantor in Posen for quite a number of years. Now, things changed in 1919 when Posen was overrun by the Poles and by Pilsudski and Pelarevsky, and my father found it necessary to look for a new home. And he left Germany, and he went to Frankfurt, and the family, my mother and uh, four children, stayed behind, and they eventually followed uh, three years later, when we all lived in Frankfurt. Okay. Your brothers and sisters? My brothers and sisters are... Uh, Joseph? Joseph? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Samson? Samson. Max. Max. And... Uh, Joseph. Yes. And your sister? You had and my sister is, yes, Sulamit. Sulamit was her name. Now, who was the oldest or the youngest, and how did they go? The oldest was uh, Max. He was the oldest. He was uh, a rabbi in uh, England and uh, lived there up to a hundred year, up to a year ago when he died. And was buried in Bournemouth. Then uh, my other brother was uh, Samson. Samson was a genius in, on the, mu in the musical field and was an outstanding pianist and accompanist and accompanied uh, great singers and uh, instrumentalists. And then we had uh, Joseph, the youngest. Joseph was bo also born in Posen and he left us after he graduated high school and went to Lithuania to study Talmud. And there he became a rabbi and an outstanding rabbi eventually ending to be a rabbi in St. Louis. <clears throat> then in St. Louis he was rabbi for many years until uh, th four years ago, which was 1989, when he died in St. Louis and was buried in New York. There is also my sister, who was the youngest. She was the youngest. Uh, she is Sulamit, or Shulamis, was her name, also born in Posen, 
as all our children were, and uh, she left uh, Germany as well, luckily went to England and married in England uh, a Rivlin, a well-known Israeli family who settled in uh, England, in Leeds and in Cardiff. Your young childhood, the first nine years were spent in Posen. Yeah, in Posen. Do you have any recollections? Of uh, everything. I remember everything detailed. Tell us a little bit about life in Posen. Life in Posen was a most uh, pleasant one. The German Kaiser lived in Posen. He had his castle in Posen. And we uh, often... Uh, went around it and saw it. Of course, we had a Jewish community which was outstanding and had some of the greatest rabbis uh, who were uh, functioning in Posen for s s quite a several centuries. And of course, all this changed uh, with the advent of uh, communism and changes in Posen and uh, we all had to leave, as I said, and uh, settled uh, in Frankfurt, which was a, perhaps the most Jewish city in Germany. Frankfurt had uh, well over 30,000 uh, Jewish uh, people, mostly very Orthodox. Frankfurt was the most Orthodox city in Germany under the rabbinate of uh, Samson Raphael Hirsch, who was an outstanding rabbi, and many others. Was the life in Posen in a ghetto type of an environment? No, not anymore, let me say this, not anymore, because Posen had at a time, uh, Frankfurt, I'm sorry, had the greatest ghetto, the largest ghetto in Germany for about 700 years and uh, the history is not a very pleasant one as histories of ghettos normally are not uh, very uh, delightful and Posen uh, at that time of course was outstanding because Rothschild is a product of uh, Posen, uh, of Frankfurt, bo born in Frankfurt. I'm mixing my cities up here. Okay. Was mm -hmm. born in Frankfurt, and great uh, uh, business people, great scientists. Uh, what do you remember of life in Posen? I remember everything detailed. Okay. Now they didn't. Did they have cars, or did you have a horse and buggy? Did you go to school uh, nearby to Heda? I went to a gymnasium, which is a high school. No, before uh, high school, no, isn't it? In Posen, you were nine school, years old. I uh, went to uh, the Friedrich Wilhelm Gymnasium. That was the name of the thing. Also, a high school because I wasn't so young. I was already bar mitzvah no. when I came. To no, in Posen, not in Frankfurt. Oh, in Posen. 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 Yes. Ah, in Posen, I went to a school which was a, a preparant school, preparing for high school. And I went into uh, to, to this school uh, until I was 12 years old, uh, prior to my leaving okay. to uh, Frankfurt. What was your mother doing during this time, raising the children? My mother was raising the children and uh, today when I think back, you see, we, I, we have, must have been quite well off. We had uh, uh, always two maids, one uh, maid, uh, kinder, uh, kinder mädchen, you see, who brought up, looked after the children, helping my mother. And after all, we were five children. And uh, the made that uh, looked after the kitchen and, and other uh, pleasant and unpleasant uh, uh, abodes. 
was the synagogue a big synagogue that your father was the cantor? No, my father was in a smaller synagogue. The large synagogue, which is an outstanding synagogue, again, I have to repeat this, was very large and very big, and I can say this not in only Posen. in Posen, not out of my memory, but also because I was in Posen uh, two years ago and I visited it and I was surprised to see that magnificent building, uh, the synagogue, untouched, not disturbed. But <coughs> what was outside written, uh, a factory or whatever it was, it was converted into a factory, into a big uh, storehouse. And my, uh, this was the main synagogue in Frankfurt, an Orthodox synagogue. I know Rabbi Freiman was a rabbi and a wonderful cantors which they had all together, a very lively congregation. And my father belonged into a, to a small synagogue which was, as we call, an out, outtritt synagogue which doesn't fall in with the main synagogue but only with people who were extremely orthodox. I mean, I'm not proud of it to say it, to see it, to leave the uh, main congregation in order to belong to a, an outstrait outstri congregation, but that's the way it was. He was very from, very pious, and uh, did uh, his service uh, in the synagogue, served there for 10 years. Now, do you think the fact that he was the cantor of a small synagogue, could that have brought him the wealth and the position for you to have? You know, I don't think it had anything to do with it. It was just the fact that he was a cantor, he was a shochet, he was a teacher and worked very hard. All I remember my father always working from morning to night. Now, you, did and your grandparents course, live there at the time? Or uh, were they alive when you were born? Your grandparents? My I'm, grandparents, <coughs> yes. My grandparents were alive when I was born and they lived in Samta. Samta is a suburb of, po, uh, of Posen. You see? Of Posen, Posenani it's called today. And uh, they lived there and they had a store. And uh, we went to visit uh, the Großmutter and the Großvater. You see? And uh, there were other children of my father, brothers and sisters of my father. And it was altogether a very close knit, large family uh, to which I belonged. Were those the grandparents on your mother's side or your father's grandparents side? Grandparents on my father's side and grandparents on my mother's side. I haven't spoken about my mother at all. My yeah. mother came from Bavaria, Geroldshofen. You see, it's a smaller congregation, Bavaria, where my grandfather was also the cantor, the teacher, and again an outstanding musician. And my musical talent today, I trace back to the father of my mother, you see, my grandfather from Bavaria. He was a good uh, violinist and read music uh, very uh, fluently. Now, did both grandparents live in this little suburb of Posen? No, no, it's completely different. My different areas. My father areas. lived in Posen. Uh, my grandfather, my father's, yes. Yeah. They lived in Posen. My mother came from Bavaria, a thousand miles away. Ah, okay. Yes, in southern Germany. Okay. And yes. the, na the names of these people? And the name of my grandparents were Godlewski. On Bavarian which side? One. On the, the, ba ba the Bavarian one, were Godlewski, and they were... Say that again? They, Godlewski. Godlewski. And they came, from, were born in Grad Grodno. My grandfather was born in Grodno. Grodno is a city in Lithuania, next to Kovno. Okay, and their names on your mother's side? On my mother's, mother's side, her parents' names? My parents' names are Godlewski. First names? 
Do you remember? Moses. Moses, Moses Godlewski, yes. And Moses Godlewski. And his wife? Oh, Lord. <laughs> there you lost me. Okay. <laughs> and and your father's side, they lived right outside of My Posen? My father lived right in Posen, yep. in Posen, in and, the city in Posen. And the parents, his parents were born? And his parents were also born in Posen. Everyone in Zamta, you see the suburb of Posen. Okay. So it's right, right next to it. This is an old Posen thing. And the Posen family, which goes back to uh, Rabbi Akiva Ega, you see? I got, uh, uh, one of the outstanding rabbis, you see? Not the famous Rabbi Akiva, you see? But Rabbi Akiva Ega, you see? That is uh, the thing who originally came from the city of Ega, Ega which is in uh, uh, Bohemia. Okay, and your par and your father's parents' names in Hebrew? My father's parents', parents the one who lived in Semtem. Moshe? Moshe. Yes, Moshe. Yes. Grandmother? I, I wish you wouldn't have asked. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't remember. Okay, um, we're back to our young childhood in Posen. You went to school there? I went to school there in Posen. And I remember exactly my teachers, and remember their names, and I remember how good or how nasty they were, you see. At that time there was no uh, Nazism yet, you see. That was many years before uh, Hitler came. Hitler's advent was only 10, uh, 12 years afterwards. But uh, some of the Germans were Nazis, uh, even... Uh, before Hitler. You know, what was the events that led the fact that your father had to leave Posen and go to Frankfurt? That was the time when Nazism came and prohibited... Communism. And you, you mean communism. Not, not. Nazism didn't come until the late 20s, yeah, did it yes, not? Yes, that, that's it. That, but he it, was, he was there until, and, and, uh, until the Nazis started. Okay. And these be, uh, so you're going from Posen to Frankfurt now? I'm going from Posen to, to Frankfurt, Frankfurt because of the communists. He came there in 1910, you see, he came to... Uh, 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 1919, I think. 1919. You said... Yes, yes, you, yes. It was, you were a young boy, about yes, nine yes, years yes. old. I, and I was only born in 1910. Ten, right, okay. Oh, I'm a young fellow, yes. Right. I was born in 1910. That means 1990, you are right. That's when my uh, father left. And my mother uh, came uh, two years later because he had to look for a parnose, for a, uh, a livelihood. And uh, that was not so, so easy for a man who was already uh, in uh, uh, more than the middle of 50s, you see. But at that time, everybody who moved out, you see, start to live. Uh, but he uh, did very well in Frankfurt. He was also cantor in Frankfurt, um, in, the in the synagogue on Börneplatz, you see. On Börneplatz, it's a well-known uh, big synagogue in Frankfurt. And there he uh, fu functioned. And, uh, For how long were you living in Frankfurt? then, from in 1919, as a family? As a family, we were living in Frankfurt 1919, I was bar mitzvah in 1932. 23. Yeah. 23. 1923. 1923. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was never very good in mathematics. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then uh, my family was still there. Hitler started off in 1933, you see. At least he became, uh, he started off before, but he became uh, uh, the leader, the Führer. So during that time, you actually, you were a teenager growing through your uh, high school years? High school years and went into the university and I studied at the university in, in, in Frankfurt. In Frankfurt, yes. Okay, your brothers, they were older than you. 
Did they brother, do the same? Yes. Uh, well, one brother is older, all the others are younger. Than okay, I the think. older brother, did he do the same thing then? My older brother did the same thing, yes. And he went to the seminary, and we both graduated from the seminary in Cologne. And I may pat myself on the uh, back. I have a very good reputation in Cologne. Even today, 50 years later, I am asked to come to Cologne and uh, perform and speak at the school where I once, the school is destroyed, you see, but the people who were there, the non-Jewish people, still to come down to, uh, to Cologne. And I have been there, as I just mentioned, every year to uh, uh, pass my wisdom and okay. my experience onto them. Now, in Frankfurt, you went to high school, the gymnasium. Yeah, gymnasium. And you, you were by mitzvah. Ah, yes. Okay, yes. now is the gymnasium also a Hebrew school? No, gymnasium is not a Hebrew school. It was a German school. A German school, Kaiser uh, Wilhelm, no, Kaiser Friedrich Gymnasium, you see. I, I only deal with Kaisers, you know. <laughs> yes, I went in Posen, I was to the Friedrich Wilhelm, you see, which was also a Kaiser, and uh, Kaiser Friedrich in uh, in Frankfurt. Okay, yes. Where did how did you get your Hebrew training? Your your knowledge for your mostly at home. My papa, my father. You see, he taught me more than anybody else. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, and your bar mitzvah took place in the bar temple. Bar took place. Yes, in the synagogue of Donnerplatz. Of course, like all other boys, you had a big party afterwards. No, my dear, no big party, no party at all. I did my uh, Torah and all the uh, necessary things I had to do, and then I was invited by a cousin of my father just for a cup of uh, for a schnapps and uh, a, a, a cup of tea and a piece of cake. That was all it, uh, everything because my father was with me. My mother wasn't there yet, you see. She was still in Posen. Oh, I see. So we had a, a rather frugal uh, uh, bar mitzvah, you see. But it, uh, it didn't help my uh, uh, knowledge or my character uh, in any way, you see. Big bar mitzvah, small bar No, mitzvah. that's, I know. When did your mother then come? You were My already... mother came 19, a, a year after I was bar mitzvah. Okay. See? That must have been... Uh, 24. Uh, 24, that's yes, when she came. And uh, then she set up home for the family. We set up home for the family, and we lived in uh, Uhlandstraße, you see, and... Uh, it lived in a very Jewish uh, surrounding. It, it wasn't a ghetto, it was just a neighborhood. No ghetto anymore. Was it ghetto. close to the uh, shul? Huh? Was it close to the shul that your father was the cantor? Was mm -hmm. it nearby? Not really. Well, not far, not real, because the whole city is not so big, you see. But right. The university was further away. There I had to take already a, a trap a tram, you see, to get there, and uh, that was only later. I only started the university when I was 20 years old. Okay, now, you're, 19 years old. You're, when you, you were in high school, the gymnasium, was that an all-day class or part of the day? No, that was uh, a morning and perhaps uh, an hour or two in the afternoon, you see. That was, that was all in the gymnasium, but gymnasium gave me a lot, especially musically, because I entered the choir, I was chosen, you see, at that time you couldn't say, <laughs> like some synagogues here, I'm going to join the choir, you see, and then you hear some so horrible sounds coming out, <laughs> but uh, there we were very uh, strictly uh, tested whether we were able to, uh, whether we were permitted to come into the choir. 
and I sang into the choir and I sang some of the st big standard works already at the age of uh, uh, 12 and 13, music literature and uh, it did very well, yes, and it gave me a great uh, uh, boost okay. in my musical. Talent. Outside of school, what were your activities outside of school? After you came home in the afternoon? Outside school was the yeshiva. Okay. Yeah, the yeshiva, and I went to the yeshiva. Of course I had to go to the yeshiva. Do you think my father would, let me, would feed me if I wouldn't go to the yeshiva? See? So I went to the yeshiva, and I was in the, in the yeshiva up to my nine, eight, 18 or 19 years I was, you see? and studied in the yeshiva and had a good uh, uh, Hebrew grinding and Talmudic, which is more than Hebrew. Hebrew is nothing. Anybody can speak Hebrew, you see. But what I, I studied mostly was Talmud. Mm -hmm. That is something... So it appears that your gymnasium education and your yeshiva education both ended about 19 years old. And, and then you went correct. to the seminary? Correct. You left Frankfurt. Frankfurt, yeah. And you went to the seminary. No, I, no. I, I, you went I to the went university. To seminary. I went to the seminary before when I was 17 years old. Now, where was the seminary? The seminary was in Cologne. The seminary was in Cologne. And did you live there or did you come back and forth? I know I lived in Cologne. I lived in Cologne for two years. You see. Alone? Uh, First, no, right with my brother, you see, my brother Max, you see, the el elder brother, he also <coughs> went through the seminary, and we both graduated uh, from there. And the seminary is what, a university or the, the seminary Jewish? seminary is a, both, it's Jewish and a, a secular education, yes, it, 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 it. Took care of both of it. And the name of the seminary in Cologne was? Okay. Das Kölner Lehrer Seminar. You see? Okay. The Cologne Teacher Seminary. That was the name of it. And uh, it did me very good. And even today I uh, feel the benefit of my knowledge. And uh, not so much the Hebrew knowledge, because that I had at home. My father did this for me. But uh, the secular knowledge, we had excellent teachers, see? Dr. Good, Dr. Hart, Dr. Stern, you see, the teachers. And uh, they gave me a, 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 a Bible, me a love for... Uh, for learning. Lit, for lit, no, for lit German literature, German literature which really I didn't do much before, but this was really Schiller and Goethe, you see, and the other great ones, Kleist. <laughs> and uh, this I got from my teacher in uh, uh, Cologne. And I have pictures here from the seminary, and uh, it may be interesting to... Well, let's talk more. now. You talk so much about your educational experiences while you were growing up. Yeah. Now, as a young man in those days, there was more to life, I would think, than just learning oh, education yes. and yeshiva. Yeah. What are some of your experiences that you can remember outside with your friends? Uh, with my friends? Well, do you want to know the girlfriends which I had? Why not? <laughs> Boyfriends. Things that you may have done. Yes. Uh, well, my friends, <laughs> boyfriends, as you say, were cousins of mine who also went to the yeshiva, you see, and uh, we, were, we were very close. Schönberg was the name, and uh, that meant a lot. Unfortunately, they were all lost during the uh, Holocaust. and. Uh, Otherwise, I I was I was a, 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 a what you call this a workaholic, you see. A schoolaholic. Uh, yes, yes. Unfortunately, I worked much too hard. 
and this I haven't uh, uh, stopped up to the present day. That's true. Okay, we're coming to the point that you graduated from the seminary. Yeah. You were about 21, 22 20, years old? Uh, yeah, now 20, just uh, bef shortly before 21, because when I was 21 years old, I, I took my first job as a teacher, you see, and I went to Hamburg, and I became teacher in Hamburg, yes, and I taught in Hamburg for seven years. Did you go there alone? Hmm? Did you go there alone, or did you know? Alone, alone, alone. 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 Yes, Hamburg and uh, Frankfurt is quite a distance. And your parents okay. stayed back my, in Frankfurt? My, stayed, my parents stayed behind in Frankfurt. You see, my family was in Frankfurt. Yes, they don't, didn't come really hardly came to visit me as far as I, can, as I remember. Because it's, I was busy, you see. I was busy studying. And uh, I was in Hamburg, uh, as I say, seven years good seven years, seven and a half years. Now we're talking from like 1931 to, to 1938? Eight, but it was still 37. Okay. See, till 37. My father came to me in 37. My father was a very uh, uh, f foreseeing person. You see, the, he said, things are not good. I hear about Hitler and all this and uh, You've got to make a, a, a change. Forget about your position in uh, in Hamburg. Hamburg. Give notice and look for something else. And this is something unusual in Germany. In England, you change every Montag and Donnerstag. You see? Constantly. People have a position one year, next year, there's somewhere else, then there's somewhere else. In Germany, you accept the position without any uh, explanation, it is for life. And if things hadn't changed, I'd be in Cologne, in, my, uh, in Hamburg, in my position, right, even today. Can you tell us about the position that you had in 1931? You were a teacher. Teacher of what? Teacher of everything. In what kind of school? In, uh, it was in, uh, is, is, is again, a suburb of uh, Hamburg called Altona, see, Altona, and I taught there practically every subject, including music and sports, where I was very, uh, well, lend, lend me a word, <laughs> a word. <laughs> capable, capable, capable. Yes, I was a I'm very adept. Adept, adept, that's better. I was a, a good sportsman. In, in what sports activities? In athletics, particularly light, light athletics, you see. What kind? Uh, light athletics, that's running and high, high jumping and uh, also uh, uh, great, uh, you see, apparatus gymnastics. Single bar double bars and so on, you see. I mean, I could walk on, my, on, this, on the double bar, you see, with my hands, with my hands down, you see, walk and walk. I walked on, uh, I, on my hands as well as on my feet at that time. <laughs> Today I have trouble in walking on my feet. Now, where did you get that, uh, that training? I mean, you didn't get it in that, Cologne. No, that was in the... Uh, in the was it in Frankfurt? Yes, preparatory school. Or in Posen? No, it was a preparatory school. It was actually a school which was in situated in Bavaria again, in Burg Prepach. I didn't mention this before. In Burg Prepach. And there we had an excellent gymnasium in this uh, school. And I uh, worked out, and I was also the, the teacher, the sports teacher of the Jewish community. How old were you at that point? Uh, how old? Now, I was? When you were doing that then? 
during that at that time, mm -hmm. I was about uh, uh, around 15 years. Yeah, this was years now back. Yeah, yeah. It goes While you were still back in Frankfurt, you were yeah. also doing this that's teaching right. at the school. That's right, yes. yes. You said in Bavaria. Hmm? You said in Bavaria. In Bavaria. In Bavaria. No, it's not Frankfurt. Prepper. Prepper. That's not, it's, it's not Frankfurt. It's no, no. South of Frankfurt. I see. South of Frankfurt. I didn't live in Frankfurt. I lived in Burg Prepper. You see? Uh -huh. How yes. many years? When he was 15? Uh, two years. Two years. But yes. you were still going to the seminary in Frankfurt uh, uh, at the same time? Yes, no. At that time I had left the seminary and returned to the seminary again after Burg Prepper. So this kind of was a special school which prepared you for teaching the book prepper school in Bavaria. And I uh, uh, passed my examination as a teacher, which was reinforced afterwards when I came back to Frankfurt, uh, to the yeshiva and to the university. Mm -hmm. But so this was a preparation school. See, it was called a preparation school. Yeah, but it, it wasn't Bavaria. It, it wasn't because Bavaria is far from uh, Frankfurt. You mentioned the word Bavaria, but it's... Bavaria. No, it was not. It was on the way to Bavaria. It was in Oberfranken. Oberfranken. Go ahead, yes. Oberfranken. Yes? Oberfranken. And so you moved out of the house and lived there for two years? And lived for two years, yes. Alone? Alone, yes. I lived, or there were other schools, so, uh, other students, you see. And, and Did you live at the school then? As we lived at the school, we all school? With, uh, but you bought, bought and lodging and everything was in it. See? Uh -huh. Yes. What was the name of the school? The, uh, the uh, Preparantenschule. Oh, Preparantenschule. <coughs> you see, Preparantenschule, which was quite, uh, uh, quite useful. Uh, it's uh, inter interesting. I mean, now that you mention it, you see, I never really uh, recapitulate, uh, recapitulated what I did mm -hmm. and what I didn't do. But now it comes to me, you see, sometimes the, my activities were overlapping, you see, yes. and my studies were overlapping here and there. So I got the best of uh, uh, two worlds sometimes. Mm -hmm. One is the sports, you see. Uh, let me show you afterwards some uh, uh, pictures from my spot. Uh, we'll do that. You mentioned also that you took the tram from Frankfurt to the university. Yeah, that when was, was that? That was uh, beginning at the year 19. I, 18 I practically finished, you see, 18 and a half. And then I went to Frankfurt. And then I went to the... How, yes. how long were you at the university in Frankfurt? The university in Frankfurt, two years. For two years, I have still my student book. And what was your, what were you studying there? I was studying Naturwissenschaften, sports, and music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you got your early training at the gymnasium at the uh, school, uh, school outside of Frankfurt for the gymnastics. Yeah. And you finished, and now you're teaching in Hamburg for yeah. seven years. Yeah. You were 21, 22, 23 yeah. years old, a young yeah. man. Yeah. Tell us about life in Hamburg for a young man who taught. Delightful. Tell um, us some of the things that you did as a young man that you'd like to tell us. Well, Hamburg is such a beautiful city that even going for a walk through the park, you see where I live, there was a big park right <coughs> thing. And uh, this park, belonged to Heinrich Heine, the famous uh, poet, you see. His father was a banker there. And uh, it was a glorious, and I went through on a walk through this park practically every day, sometimes with books, sometimes without books. And it was a, uh, <laughs> an experience which I cannot repeat today, because I have been in Frankfurt in Hamburg a number of times, and I went through this park, but it's not the same. See? It, things change. Certainly we are impre impre impressed by certain things at certain ages, which change later on, and uh, 
depends on the circumstances. Because young men, Hamburg, you had any social activities, extracurricular activities? Did you play outside sport? You know, uh, uh, Hamburg? Yes. Uh, w tell us some of the things you did. Uh, uh, city that city with over a million inhabitants, you see. In those days? Uh, in those days already. And a uh, very uh, active Jewish community in Hamburg. And I, uh, my, uh, apart from studying and teaching, my rabbi, my director of the school was Rabbi Karlebach, you see also one of the famous names in, uh, in the rabbinate and education in uh, Germany. And uh, so I had this as a background and also the friendship of Rabbi Kalabach, which I extremely uh, enjoyed. And I'm today still, although most of the children died, he had nine children, and he himself also was murdered in uh, uh, Riga, uh, where he was transported. And uh, there were three children I left, see, two daughters and one son. And I have met them, and we have met them in uh, uh, Germany, I have met them in Israel, they are all teaching at least the two girls are teaching in uh, Germany. They're a professor at the Barilan uh, University. Yes. And the son, Julius, is a professor in Heidelberg, at the Heidelberg University. How did you dress at that time <coughs> in, in Hamburg? And how I dressed? Yes, were you conscious of it? Always. Much better than now. I'll tell you why, because our congregation had also a tailor, see? and this was an excellent tailor, outstanding. Now don't ask me what his name was. I That's won't. okay, but I won't. you didn't wear the black coats no, of no, the no, 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 no. shtetls. No, that is American. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, the Hasidic The Hasidic word. No, no, no. No, no, we were Western, we were modern. modern uh, did, did all things stop, even in your community, for Shabbos? Of course. And all the holidays? Of course, of course. And there was study all the time? Yes, yes, religion was, was uh, <coughs> basic in, uh, in, uh, in Germany altogether. You see, German Jews were either religious or they were liberal. Those who were religious were very religious and those who were liberal were very liberal. You see? There wasn't a, a middle uh, road as we have here which is called conservative Judaism. There isn't conservative. There's either Judaism or you're a goy. You see? Or you don't observe. Okay. Now, going away from school, you had friends that you visited? Oh, yes. I had friends that I visited. Male friends, female well, friends? Uh, yes. Well, I would say mostly, mostly male friends, you see. Female friends... Uh, 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 don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're a young man. You know, you got to remember those things. I know, but I don't want my daughter to know. <laughs> she knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. <laughs> yes. Tell us about some of those, you know, I, things that you did with your friends, yes. you know, places that you went. My friends, uh, we, did, we took long walks. That's what that I remember. Always walked and walked and walked to see and talked about what it is. Some, sometimes when the rabbi had a very uh, attractive uh, sermon, we went and we discussed the pro and the contra uh, of this sermon. It always meant a lot to us. And uh, I liked going to the movies. And I saw movies of old German actors which were greater than anything there is today. Emil Jannings, you see, Harry Litke, Marlene Dietrich. 
these were all young, pretty young girls at that time. You see, and we went to see all these in the, the movie. And I, I love to go to the movies. See, some uh, and uh, <coughs> art which I have forgotten altogether today. If I go to the movies once a year, that's about the most I can sneak in. How about museums? Yes, yes, museums as well, definitely. Museums, art. Was, uh, now in those days, you, you between the ages of like 22 and 27, 28, did you do any traveling? Did they do traveling in those days the way they do it today? Did you mm -hmm. go places? Maybe to Paris, maybe to Berlin, maybe to England? No, they don't do any, didn't do anything at that time which they do today, you see, that has changed. But I remember that uh, I went every summer, I spent in Arendsee, now that is on uh, the, uh, the Baltic Sea, you see, and there was a, a, a home, a, st a student's home, where you could uh, uh, stay, and I stayed there, and, and that uh, did me very good. And uh, then the uh, interesting part was, the last year I stayed there, that was 1936. 1936, everything was, of course, very strongly Nazi, and I was in this, uh, and they in this home for uh, uh, students, for, for the donation, a stiftung as we call it. And uh, then uh, one Shabbat it was, when a, a commander came from the Nazis, out, I want everything, and uh, 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 want all the students and everybody left, leaving this house, by uh, tonight, because we are taking over, we are making this our headquarter, and I know that was very uh, dangerous, of course. And I remember I was the only one who really opened the door, the back door through the kitchen, and went out and saw masses of people already waiting for the great exodus. And uh, uh, then it became night, and as it was nightfall, about midnight, we all had our things packed, and we had to leave it, and everything was taken over and given over to the Nazis, and we went to Rostock, you see a city which is today quite a bit in the paper because of the na Nazi activities. And we, we had, of course, we were, had to walk there, you see, at night there was no transportation. And uh, that was the end of it. And I thought at that time, if I am there already, which is uh, a quarter the distance to Lithuania, where my brother Joseph was uh, studying to be a rabbi, I go to Lithuania, you see. And I didn't go back to... Uh, Germany at that time, but took a train, or was it a ship? No, I took a ship. I took a ship and we went along the Baltic uh, uh, Sea to uh, Danz Danzig, what is this, Gdansk, you see? It's today also in the paper, it's one of the headquarters of the president of Poland, what is his name? Lech Polanska. Lech Polanska. Lech Polanska, that's right. Yeah. Yes, he was there, he lived there. And uh, we went on then to uh, Königsberg, you see, that's another uh, city on the thing. And eventually crossed into Kovno, and from Kovno we went to the yeshiva where my brother Joseph studied. Who is we? Yeah. Who, who was with you? Uh, the ship. Uh, the students? Oh, yes. Now you were the only one of the students. This was during I was summer. The only one. All this the is summer. Went home. This was summer vacation. That now. was my. That was summer vacation. Yes. In no. 1936, Six. and I went to the yeshiva in uh, Ponyevich and to the yeshiva in Telsh. 
the two yeshivas very close together. And uh, I uh, saw what went on in the yeshiva, you see, and so on. Although I only spent a vacation there, I didn't really study. <laughs> and then you went back to Hamburg. And then I went back to Hamburg, yes. Now, let's go back a few years. I think it was 1933 was Kristallnacht. Yeah. Do you remember Kristallnacht? As if it happened today. Tell us about it. It was on a Saturday. Uh, not, not, that was not Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht was really in 1938. You see? 38 Kristallnacht. But this was a boycott day. You see? 1933 was a boycott day which was on a Saturday, and on this boycott day, uh, again Jews kept away from the street. I, uh, looking, uh, I don't say it was pride, but I uh, looked, I had blonde hair, you see, and uh, looked as Germanic as anybody could. It's in fact so much that uh, my passport, which I asked from the, then, up to the day I emigrated, and I have my passport still here, they refused to put a J on my uh, uh, passport. You see, every uh, Jew, the first thing he had a J, you see, or Jude, you see, and mine was not part. They refused, just said, no, you are not a Jude, you see. What should I do? Should I say I am? No. So anyhow, at that time it was somehow uh, uh, of a benefit. And on this, Christ, uh, on this uh, boycott day, on Saturday morning, I went through the streets, through this more, many streets in the city, and the Nazis were busy uh, uh, painting with paint, Jude, you see, on every Jewish store. And there were quite a number of them, you see, the Jewish store. And then they uh, stood up, you see, in front of the uh, stores and prohibited anybody who wanted to enter, you see. Was not permitted, you see. Not Jude, you see. There, this is boycott, you see. And this went on all day, you see, until the evening. And I remember the day very, very... Of course it was uh, very uh, upsetting, you see inside, inside a person's heart, you see, to see things like this. But you couldn't do anything about it, you see, that was it. And you had no inner feelings of what the future had. Uh, I, I mean, had, you couldn't suspect, uh, or well, again, you were working. Uh, you you know what the future had. My dear friend, it is very hard to make prognosis, you see. That means to tell things, and it is nigh impossible to foretell the future. Okay? So, of course, we, nobody knew what, uh, 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 what, what was going to happen. Never did we think that it would go that far as it did, because Jews were living and they were not emigrating. Had we known, or all these known, what was in, 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 before them, they would have rushed out, all of them, see, or most of them, who had only a few pennies to spare. Of course, we, had, we were allowed to leave the country with more than 10 mark, 10 mark, you see, which is uh, a couple of dollars. That's all at that time. But uh, nobody expected, see. And things became only worse and worse as time went on. Tell us about some of the things that and, you remember. Uh, that what, what some I of the instances. Remember, what I remember, one of the most horrible things I remember is these Nazi groups uh, marching through the city and singing, you see. And I remember their songs very well. I may as well repeat it right now, you see. And about everything against the Jews, you see. And when that blood from Messer spritzt, you see, then it's, things are twice as good, you see. 
if the Jew, if Jewish blood uh, 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 runs down the knives, you see, that's what makes us really will make us really happy. See? That was, and then you have groups of a hundred people singing, "Um in the blood and blood from Messer Spritz, then it's not mal so good." You see, these were the songs which they sang. I mean, quite a number of them. Anyhow, that was uh, perhaps uh, uh, that was hurts me most. Because the other things, if there isn't much action, you see, it doesn't affect me so much. But then it came afterwards to the Kristallnacht. You see, Kristallnacht was in 1938. You see, was it 38? No, your father came to you when in 37, and said, uh, yeah, "Oh yes." Uh -huh. He said, "We have you, we, we have, have to leave." Yes. Yeah, we have to be able to do it. It's 37, yes. In 37, my father came and said, leave the to position Hamburg. in Hamburg. Leave the position in Hamburg, he said. You see? And whatever you do, get out of Hamburg. See? Although Hamburg was one of the best cities as far as Nazi, as anti-Semitism was concerned. Now, where was and he going with the family? I mean, he, he, you had your mother? He, the, the families, uh, he went to live in, uh, uh, the, in uh, Hamburg, in the center of Hamburg, the Jewish center of Hamburg, you see, called Rutschbahn, was the street called. And he lived there with my mother. My brothers, my sister, we all had gone to England. Yes. No. You left Hamburg. You left I your left position I after the Kristallnacht or before Kristallnacht. I left my position uh, a month before Kristallnacht. Before Kristallnacht, but I was in Cologne the last year. You see, the last year after I left uh, Hamburg, I was teacher in Cologne. That's what fa my father told me: leave that, go to Cologne. It's better. But he came to Hamburg. He came to Hamburg, but he lived in uh, uh, Altona, you see, which is a suburb of Hamburg. Okay. So uh, there wasn't much of a change. And I... Did you go to Cologne by yourself again? I went to Cologne by myself and I teach, taught As a teacher, there. you were about 27 years old, 28 years old then. Yes, yes, yes. And this was really my most successful teaching uh, year in all my life. I had more success in teaching and in friends in, uh, in those uh, this year and a half than I had in the rest of my life. And Tell I us about it. Huh? Tell us about some of the experiences you remember. Well, what I remember is my musical and my poetical abilities made me write uh, plays and songs. And there was one play which was called The Bunte Weg, you see, the colored uh, way, the motley way, <coughs> where uh, uh, two uh, Jewish boys are discussing what are we going to do, where are we going to do, and they go to uh, youth centers and to uh, the station, uh, railway station and to uh, uh, homes to find out what uh, people really wanted, just to give a picture, a description of uh, the mood of that time. That was in 1937-38, Most, mostly written in 37, within a rather short time. And this was performed afterwards, and, and music of course to go with it, performed in, uh, in Cologne, and it was an outstanding success, the Bonte Beek. And uh, I had many inquiries from other cities. You see, send it to us in Germany and, and uh, let us have it. And I sent it, actually started off sending it to one, <laughs> and uh, a Tischewa in Breslau, and his, he was very nice of him. He sent it back to me and said, 
we will not have time to perform it. Times look as if there is no, is no future and keep at least your peace. I don't want you, want you to lose it. And I still have it here right now. And what happened is that afterwards, 50 years later, in Cologne, a teacher, a, a, a lady teacher by the name of Korbach, uh, taught in a school and uh, after a while she saw something about Jewish Jews. She said, what is that about Jews here in this school and so on? And she was told that this was a Jewish school. In fact, this was the biggest Jewish Volksschule, yes? Volksschule is a basic school in Germany, over a thousand pupils. And uh, it, as it happened, I had been also sports teacher in that very school in Cologne, many years before that. <coughs> And she inquired, and she and her husband set out to write a history of the Jews in Cologne. Nobody wrote it, no Jew ever wrote it, none of the rabbis who were there ever attempted to write it. You see, they were only concerned about their job and their daily uh, duties. But Korbach wrote it, a non, to a non Jewish man. And uh, then he, I got a letter from him asking me, what is that Bunte Weg? I hear about that Bunte Weg and so on. And I sent him the Bunte Weg, you see. And he uh, went to the various schools and tried to, you see, and didn't rest until he had a number of uh, engagements, you see, performed in the whole Weidenschule, in the uh, Ursuline Schule and so on, you see, schools who said they uh, performed this. And this was performed now for the past four years, every year in Cologne, in different schools. And I have been invited to come over to uh, at least let them see who the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 who the uh, writer is. The yes. writer. Who wrote the place? That's always an attraction. You see, if they see it with me. So that was very nice, and especially the performance which we had last year. But were you there in, in Cologne? In, no, in, no. No? no. I saw the video of it. The no, I saw the video. video. Yes, yes. Uh, that was such an experience, such an enthusiasm. It's amazing that non-Jewish pupils, no, neither non-Jewish, spoke Hebrew, you see, performed in Hebrew, sang Hebrew songs, you see, which are in this uh, play, and, uh, and loved it so much that uh, I hear Mr. Korbach told me, whenever there is a meeting of something, they sing uh, uh, Shalom, you see, they sang these non-Jewish children up to today, you see, and all they want is me to come over again and to uh, 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 sing with them and to perform. That is, uh, a, I say this with great uh, uh, gratitude, and these girls and uh, boys are wonderful, no anti-Semitism, whatever, you see. Uh, <clears throat> I'll give you an instance. The director of the school was a, a Dr. Klibanski, and Dr. Klibanski also was murdered in Riga, because the, the whole school was at that time brought over there. And uh, he, uh, Mr. Korbach didn't rest until the city gave him a square, you see, which was called Dr. Uh, what's his name? Julius, Julius Klibanski? Yes, Dr. Klibanski Square, which is today in Cologne. See? And... Uh, he was the director of the school then? He, he was the director at that time, mm -hmm. you see? He was... Uh, 
he was also the one who gave me the job. And uh, I remember then was a consecration of this place and uh, the choir sang and I studied with them Jewish songs, psalms and so on, all in Hebrew and they did it very well and when the ceremony was finished uh, I uh, will now uh, put instead of a wreath we'll put there was one tree which was left from the good old times of our seminar nothing else only one tree at the foot of the tree we'll put uh, as it is customary a stone like some putting stones on a, a, a grave uh, gravestone this was done just recently uh, that was last year right that was last year <coughs> and uh, and I told you know you're all dismissed go home thank you very much for your day and then uh, uh, Balabatim uh, people of the congregation came forward and put a, a stone down there mm -hmm. and then suddenly I see the youngsters I mean these were all 18 years old see, the boys and the girls all of them lining up everybody with a little stone in their hand those who were told to go home they put a little stone down feel the respect it was a wonderful gesture but yes again I have pictures of it now back in the days that you were there it was a Jewish school it was yes. completely Jewish that was completely Jewish, Jewish. now was Cologne safer for the Jews than Hamburg or Frankfurt? The Salamem shows there was no difference. Everything was the same. So when Kristallnacht came? Kristallnacht came, they all were the same, they all did the same, they all followed the Führer, you see, and that was all. What are your memories of Kristallnacht? I, Kristallnacht itself, I had been out. I just left before. Left where? Uh, left uh, Cologne before and went to London. Okay, now is this the first time you've left Germany? Oh, you left Germany for London for good? No, y y well, I left Germany for London, not even for good. I left Germany because I had to sign. Uh, the, uh, uh, we were not allowed to leave uh, uh, Germany unless we sign a notice which says this is vacation and during my vacation I want to go to London because next year I have to teach England and I want to know more about the country you see that was the permission which we had and I signed this and in fact uh, a short four weeks later and there was one uh, friend of mine who was also cantor in that city uh, who uh, happened to see me four weeks later where are you going I said I'm going back to uh, Germany what are you going to back to Germany you know we signed the form yes. and he said you idiot <laughs> he said you are not going to move from here and I'll be staying here until the train has passed and make sure that you stay here you wouldn't, you daren't go back, and so on. You see, that was the, the, the sense of uh, duty, the sense of uh, keeping a promise, you see, was so strong in us, even if it kills us, you see, we would have, we would have done, done it. So, uh, <laughs> that was my, uh, uh, my uh, luck that I met Kantor Soffe, you see, was his name. So you never did go back to Germany then? I never went back to Germany. I stayed in England and... Okay, how did you get from Cologne to London? Do you remember the... No, yes, it, I took a train. It must have cost money. You know, was it a lot of money or you, you had money saved? Even if you had money saved, you were not allowed to take it out. I realize that, but it still took money to get there. Should I tell you the menace? 
Tell us the numbers. <laughs> I had a few pieces of gold. Yes? Yes. Pieces of gold, which I put into a, a book. You see? Into the back of a book. And that was this. I opened this, put the money in, in, in put the money in the back of my bo uh, uh, book. You see? Well glued up, covered and glued up and so on. And then I took my book, you see, and went out. And once I had crossed the border, the German border, I just opened up and I had, uh, <coughs> I had my pieces of gold, which kept me, uh, kept me going. Okay, now we're in 1938 and you're in, you're in London, England. Yeah. Your parents are still in Hamburg. My parents are still in Hamburg, and I asked my parents, please come, let's go. And my father, with all his wisdom, said, they don't mean us. You young people, you go out. You are in danger. We are not in danger. Nobody would touch us. And I have the uh, 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 Eiserne Kreuz, you know, he was serving in the, in the army, see? And uh, uh, had his uh, the Iron Cross. Yes, uh, the Iron Cross. Yes, yes, Iron Cross. Nebisch. for Hitler, make the difference. Nothing, whatever. And unfortunately, they were brought to uh, Theresienstadt, the concentration camp. Okay, your um, your brothers were they in Germany? My brother were out. They were in the yeshiva. The one and the others were out with me, and my sister were the one uh, who, who was the one who went out first to England, all to England. <coughs> and they stayed in England. Except uh, Joseph. Huh? Except Joseph. Uh, he Except know. Joseph, yes. He went to... Uh, he went to Shanghai. Huh? Shanghai. Shanghai. Now, first, first he went to, uh, uh, to the yeshiva, you see? And then afterwards, he saved himself, you see, by going to Shanghai. The whole yeshiva, the rabbi of the yeshiva, outstanding rabbi. Rabbi. Yes, he bought a train. That's the way you have to do it. You have to buy a train. And he joined other yeshiva who came up with the money and they had the train, and the train went right to Vladivostok, you see, on the other side of, the, uh, uh, of Russia. And from there, they went to Kobe in uh, Japan. And from, Yako from Kobe, they were told there is a ship just leaving to England in Shanghai. To America? To, uh, to England? To, to, to America, I'm sorry, to America from Shanghai. So the whole yeshiva moved over to Shanghai, you see, waiting for a couple of days in order to get on the, uh, onto the uh, ship to America. And during this week, Pearl, Pearl Harbor happened. And that was the end of the, the journey. Mm -hmm. And they were kept in, the, in Shanghai in a concentration camp for six years. Okay, you, you uh, were born, go ahead. Yeah, a, a few thousand yeshiva bachur. Oh, a lot. Yeshiva, this yeshiva... But they survived. Uh, huh? They survived. They survived. They survived, you see. And they were supported. The, the, uh, united uh, the restitution office did wonderful work, you see. Uh, Uro, yes, united. <coughs> united Nations Relief. Restitution, restitution yeah. office did wonderful work. Yes, also the highest, see, the office, both offices, head offices in New York. And they saved about 5,000 uh, uh, young people through the organization. Paid for it, you see, paid for the thing, although the conditions were horrible in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. 
No. And, and he didn't survive it, but there was no uh, uh, forceful uh, killing in it. Now, when you were born in Poland, you spoke Polish? No, I was in Germany. I you wasn't born in Poland. Posen. Okay, Posen was in Germany, so you spoke German. No, German. German. And Yiddish. No. No, you never spoke Yiddish. Never. Never no. spoke Yiddish. Never. Oh, don't tell okay. a German to speak Yiddish. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you went to England, yeah. did you know the English language? No. Did you know how to speak English? No. Okay, now you're in England and you don't know how to speak English. Now I know how to speak English, but I don't know how to speak uh, uh, German. Okay. <laughs> how did you manage to, you know, earn a living in uh, England? Oh, that's a good question. I came to England, there is first of all an office, it's called Bloomsbury House, where refugees can come who arrive there and receive a certain amount of money, for, uh, which was supported by the Jewish community in London, and we have to give them kolakavot, all honor, what they did in helping refugees. It's outstanding. And what did I do then? I became the uh, choir master of the Habonim Choir. Yes, the Habonim Choir, which was a fairly big choir there. And I uh, trained the choir and I gave concerts to the choir. Of course, there wasn't a, a, a large amounts in it, you see, but enough to buy a cup of tea and a piece of matzo. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, one day I was, I had just finished a concert when a man came on to me and, and said, uh, I am the cantor on, uh, in the nearby Dublin, city of Dublin, is I am Cantor Freilich, and uh, we are looking for a choir director for the High Holy Days. Would you be prepared to come over and conduct the choir and train a choir for the High Holy Days? Uh, that was on the 22nd <coughs> of July in 1900. Oh, 39. 39. 39, 39, 39, 39, 39. I said, fine, I'll do that, you see. And uh, we arranged everything, and I arranged to go over to Cologne. And I no, Dublin. To Dublin, and to report here in Dublin <coughs> uh, two weeks later. I got everything ready, my whole things, my coffer, <laughs> and... Uh, I went to Dublin and was very nicely to see. Then they had a boarding house for me and I stayed there and, and, and had my meals and everything and rehearsed every night, four hours. Every night, four hours. Not like here, <laughs> once in a blue moon, uh, a rehearsal. That was very <coughs> strict. And the canto was a very strict canto, the canto Freilich. And I trained them, and I had prepared the whole Rosh Hashanah uh, program within uh, uh, six weeks. See? And the choir was outstanding, first class choir. And uh, that was it, that went on until the 29th of uh, August. On the 29th of August, you see, because I was supposed to go back uh, after Yontif, you see. I know it was Saturday morning, I went to Shul, and I looked into the newspaper. America declares war on Hitler, see, on the 29th of August. So on this day, I knew there was no back, no going back anymore. So, and I stayed with this congregation. 19 years. From 1939 till to 1958, 
57 or 57 I came to Dublin. I uh, came to, where am I now? 58 we came to Anaheim. 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 <laughs> yeah. How long were you in England before then? If I can... How long I was in England? Yes. Before you went to Dublin? Before. To Dublin a year and, uh, and, 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 and a little, you see? Just, so, just approx approximately a year. Can you say something about your activities in England? In England? Well, it's a long period. I must say I was very much taken by England. I loved London. I loved London and I was on my feet from morning until night going through the city. And I know London better than any London I can know it by now. Uh -huh. I, I went everywhere, you see? and spent every penny I had on uh, traveling through London and went to concerts and uh, it was a very fruitful uh, time I had there, uh, especially artistic and especially musical because I just didn't rest. I never sat at home and spent a day at home, always in the morning out. Your brother and sister, your brothers and sister was, were with you, right? My brother, no, my brother was not with me. My brother had gone to Leeds and my sister is in a city in England. And my sister was, went also to Leeds and married in Leeds about uh, uh, three weeks after she uh, came to Leeds. And uh, my brother was there also, and uh, he was busy whatever he did in, uh, in Leeds. So I was alone in London. And uh, it, 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 this was one of the nicest time of all my life, was this short year I spent in London. It was beautiful. Okay, now you went to Dublin. Go ahead, I'm sorry, went, Peter. Peter. Yeah. Your only work during that time, uh, formal work, was working for Habonim? For Habonim, yes. Directing the choir, that was... Directing the choir, that's all. And uh, uh, minor support from the uh, uh, Boban House, you see, the Jewish organization, <laughs> which we had. And of course, which we promised to repay. And, uh, and, and I, had they given me ten times as much, I would have repaid them today with pleasure. And, uh, but they were very nice, very nice about it, nothing uh, unpleasant, you see, outstanding. I... How do you learn the English language? We just... didn't go to school, or didn't go to tutors or classes, you just picked no, it up no, as you went. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I had no classes. Uh, I, uh, I read uh, one book, it was, uh, I think, Langenscheid's uh, uh, English in, uh, uh, in 20 Easy Lessons or something <laughs> like this, you see. <laughs> I have to last all this, you see, in the synagogue and so on. Hebrew in ten easy lessons, you see. Ridiculous, who can learn Hebrew in ten, ten easy lessons? Not in a hundred. <laughs> when you went to Dublin, yeah. the language in Ireland is English also. It's English, yes, yes. You yes. had no trouble communicating. No, you no, were already no. oh, pretty not, versed. Yeah, no, no, it's English. It's a good English to speak in Ireland. Okay. All right. You you came there as a part-time choir director. I came as a part-time choir director. Yes. Your work was so well received, the first yes. Yantup, Yes. That they decided to hire you. Yeah. As a choir director. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your life now in Dublin. That's my life in Dublin. Essentially, I got married in Dublin. Tell us how you met your wife. Oh, I met my wife. Uh, the family where I stayed with, her name was Buchhalter, you see, and uh, Buchhalter 
uh, it was a young girl, it was she about the same uh, age as my, as my wife at that time, and uh, she had little parties always where she invited uh, uh, refugees, because there were quite a number of them, in, to be exact, 28 refugees in, uh, in Dublin. And uh, so we got to know them, and so I got to know Paula, you see. Now what is Paula's Hebrew name? What is Paula's Hebrew name? Her uh, Hebrew name? Her uh, Hebrew name was Perle, actually. Okay. I wasn't too happy about it, you see, because it's more a Yiddish name. Yes. Perle, you see. So I called her Pesse in Hebrew, you see. You see, which isn't much better. No. <laughs> Paula's family, yeah. have they been from, from Dublin for a number of years? No. Paula's Perle came from Frankfurt came from Frankfurt. Her name was Margulius. See? Margulius. Well, it's really uh, the ancestors came from Poland. See? Came from Poland. And, uh, well, yes, wait a minute. The father came from Poland and the mother, uh, 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 with a name like Prosmushkin, you see, came from Vitebsk in Russia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was a mixture between Poland uh, and, and Russia, you see, eh? Would you know Paula's parents' names? Do you remember their names? Y yes, Kosmushkin. First name. First name or Hebrew name. That was Paula. Paula. No, Paula's name. Paula's father's name. Uh, Paula's father's name was Frida. Frida. Mother. Mother. Uh, her mother name. And the father? Uh, Naomi? Uh, Lionel. Huh? Lionel. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah Lionel? All right. Why? Why? What else? Lionel. Lionel. No, I said, oh, that was a mother's uh, uh, name. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, Lionel, he called himself, you see. It was a little more, more uh, modernized uh, version of Leo. Okay. So you it's are how old about this time when you Leo. first were introduced I to Paula? I was about 30? About 30 years old. And yes. Paula? Yes. 30 years old. And Paula was how old? When Paula was 19 years old. So she was born about 1921? Exactly. 1921. Do you remember her birth date? Your mother's birthday? Remember the... Yes. 23rd of September. 23rd of September, 1921. Yeah. Okay, tell us about your courtship, about your meeting her. Oh, no. Oh, there's not much to be told, you see. Tell us. At that time, we were together, and, uh, <coughs> and three refugees uh, uh, had, uh, were willing to find a partner because we are parents and so on, so on. there wasn't much else left of the family. See. So uh, we uh, decided see, to get married. See. In fact, my uh, father-in-law, you call Lionel, <coughs> Leo, said, Paula, I wouldn't invite you, advise you to marry this man because he doesn't tell you the, uh, tell you the truth. It is impossible that you are uh, uh, practically 12 years younger than he. He must have been married, he must have children somewhere, and so on. <laughs> it's very interesting, you see. Yes. So tell us about... I was never married and I never had any children. Okay. And you got married when? September what? September 15th, 42. September 15th, 1942. Do you remember no, much May about your 25th. wedding? Oh, sorry, May, May 25th. Yeah. May 25th? Yes. <laughs> After what the wedding? Sure. Tell us about it. My wedding was a big event. And again, I have uh, pictures of the uh, uh, wedding which I may show you to remind me afterwards. Uh, and the chief rabbi who is today Lord Jakobowitz, yes, 
uh, it was the rabbi who performed uh, uh, the wedding. You see, I, the cantor in Dublin, unfortunately, after t about two years after I was uh, had uh, uh, developed cancer and died within a month. And they needed a chazan, so I uh, took over at that time. <coughs> and then they needed a, a new rabbi, because their rabbi, Rabbi Herzog, became the chief rabbi of Israel. <coughs> you see? Now the president of Israel is his is son, Same. you see? Herzog. So we needed a, 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 a rabbi as well. So we took as Rabbi Jakobowitz, you see, a young man. And this Rabbi Jakobowitz became today the most prominent rabbi, most famous rabbi in the world, you see. And he was my rabbi and uh, not only my rabbi, he was one of my best friends. Uh, Lord, Lord, I mean, ever, there's no rabbi who was ever, ever became a member of the uh, of the upper house. You see, became a, a, a lord. Okay. And, and this was before you got married, even. Uh, no, that was afterwards. That was afterwards. Afterwards, yes. Okay, let, I, let, let's talk about the wedding. Can uh, you re recall wedding? the instance of what? Did someone walk down the aisle with you? Since your parents, was it your brother? Oh yes. Pretty much. Uh, Oh Lord! How do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a man called Pribach, he walked down the aisle uh, with her. And again, I, I, I have to show you uh, photos. Uh, it was a very uh, formal uh, affair. And uh, of course the music was excellent because uh, it was my choir who sang. And I had a nag training in choir. It was really an, a, a special talent, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but I know wherever I trained the choir, it was the best. That means in uh, Ireland, although they had excellent choir directors before, my choir was the best choir in Ireland. In Dublin, see? My choir was the best choir. So uh, it is a certain talent which uh, certain musicians have. Okay. I am sometimes a certain musician. Right. Now you got married May 25th, 1942. Yeah. You moved into a house where you lived with your in-laws? No. I. I never would live as in-laws. Okay. <laughs> Tell us where uh, you set up home. Bagot Street. We lived in... Uh, Bagot Street, in a flat. Bagot Street, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. now? We lived the house. Oh, but a good thing that I have my daughter here. <laughs> yes. In, uh, we lived in Bagot Street. Yes, we took a, an apartment in Bagot Street in, in uh, Dublin. In Dublin. Yes. Okay, now tell me, first one to be born, yeah. first the, your oldest child, Yeah. is Susan. Susan was born when, Susan? I'm not being interviewed. Go ahead, Susan. <laughs> tell us your birth date. I was uh, born uh, in Dublin in 43. Your birth date? Yeah. In April. April what? 25. 25. And the Hebrew name that you have? Shoshana. Shoshana. I, I'm not the interested. Go ahead, Cantor. Her yeah. Hebrew name is Shoshana. Okay, she was your firstborn. Yeah, she was the firstborn. And then I had a boy afterwards. <laughs> and that is? His name was Peter, and I called him after Rabbi Kalabach. Emanuel in Hebrew. She was for Rabbi Emanuel, Rabbi Kalabach's name. Yes. And he was born when? He was born about a year later. Exactly? Uh, 
September 28th, 44. September 28th, 1944. And your last is Garrett. Yeah. And Garrett was born. Yes. When? Ten, ten years later. In 1954. 54. Yeah. And what is his birth date? And what is his birth date? His date of birth? February 7th. February 7th, 1954. And what is his Hebrew name? His Hebrew name is Reuven. 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 After my father. Yes. Who had a, 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 a sense died as he before that. Okay, let's go back to the early period now, soon after Susan was born. You're, you're now cantor, you're now choir director. Do you know you know what's happening in Europe? I think I think I do. You think you do. When did you find that your parents and family, you know, you know, uh, passed away? Well, it was 1951. Now I have to check on it again. Different. 1951, I was told that the concentration camp where my father was in it, in Theresienstadt. Theresienstadt, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Your accent is English. <laughs> <laughs> Theresienstadt was uh, liberated, and all the people who were liberated were brought to Paris. <clears throat> I uh, took the next train and went to Paris. And they told me that the refugees were all brought into certain hotels at that time, you see, because quickly, uh, quick arrangements had to be made. And I went to the center, which was a big hotel, I remember, in, in Paris, and asked, uh, have you any reports about uh, Rudolf Model? And I looked up and Yes, he has been, re he has been, he survived, and he has been brought into this and this hotel, one hotel at the outskirts of Paris. I drove down and drove up, he was up there on the umpteenth floor, and I came in. I saw an old man sitting there whom I could hardly recognize rather poorly and uh, I realized it was my father and after the ceremonies of uh, the acquainted again. I took my father down to the center of this uh, 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 of the Jewish uh, that was all. Home. And there they asked the question, what are we going to do? And so on. I said, what would you do, what can you do for him? I said, we can't do anything for him. But what we'll do is, just tell us where you want to be brought, him to be brought, and we'll pay the fare. So I said, fine. I'm taken to my house. I live in Anaheim. Dublin. 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 Street, and so on, so on. I said, all right, hold on, <coughs> uh, come back uh, 
next day, whatever it is, and we'll give you a ticket to Dublin in the name of your father, and you can take him home. That was it. Next morning I came, and I took him home, and I brought him to Dublin. He was very weak, very weak. Out of the shelf, as you can imagine, somebody who comes from a concentration camp. And uh, between myself and my sister, who lived in Leeds, which is not so far from Dublin, <coughs> we somehow put him on his feet again. Boss is right, but he was already disturbed. He was not anymore there active man which he used to be before <coughs> and he died uh, a little over a year afterwards in the, uh, while visiting my sister in Leeds and uh, he is buried right now he and he erected a tombstone in his name in the name of uh, my mother who uh, perished before him. See, that was the end of, uh, of the good Germans, as we may say, who didn't know what uh, the future had in store for them. Yeah. Okay, you're now having a family in Dublin. Yeah. You're the Cantor, you're the choir director. Tell us about some of the life of your children and you and Paula as you were growing up, growing up as you were growing as a family in Dublin. You were there for 14 years. When children grow up, you know, and they live their own lives and uh, they go to school and they study and learn. Uh, and uh, I must say altogether, I am, I was blessed with my children. My children are good children. Something not every, every uh, father can say. And I wouldn't change them, exchange them for anybody else. They're wonderful. And I love them. Now there are stories that go along that you were very athletically inclined. Yeah. And you participated in athletics yeah, yeah. in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Skating. Well, my greatest uh, uh, effort, as athletics were concerned, were really in Hamburg. See you, my Hamburg period, when I was uh, when I trained every day, and it was, but uh, if it wasn't. Uh, uh, running or jumping or uh, giving classes in training. I was the president of the Maccabi uh, Sports Association in, I think, I uh, was very fond of rowing, see, and I had one boat, you know, the, uh, these long boats, you see, where you only where only one person is uh, uh, rowing. I had one, and I had this near the Elbe. Elbe is a big river mm -hmm. in uh, uh, <coughs> in Hamburg, and uh, I trained and I enjoyed, and I went up. And my whole life at that time, my work and whatever it was, was not really a pleasure. It was not a thing. I did it, and I did it well, and uh, my family grew up. God sei Dank, they are well and healthy, and uh, there's very little I can add to it. So did you ever participate in any competitive events in Ireland, such as you know the Winter Olympics and skating, or any anything of that nature? How did you learn skiing? Uh, yeah, skiing. Of course, I love skiing. When did you? Uh, I love skating. Tell us, you know, how you uh, got involved in both skiing and skating. Uh, I mean, you, you're. Yes, yeah, so there's little to, to be added, you see, I just, uh, I just did it, you see. I was talented, I was a good skier, 
and uh, I was a good skater, you see, and I loved skating, and it was also my uh, success in teaching certain classes, because whenever they did something well in Hebrew school here in uh, Anaheim, I told my class, you'll be rewarded. Tomorrow bring along your skates, we are going skating, you see, and that was it. Skiing, of course, is more uh, uh, complicated because it depends on snow and uh, things like this. But uh, skating, we went skating every week. And this is in Ireland now? In, in Ireland? Uh, no, here in Dublin. I mean, in Dublin? In Dublin. In no, Anaheim. In, you mean Anaheim? Anaheim, yeah. In Anaheim. Okay. He skated in Ireland as well, Daddy. You, you, in this, on the zoo, remember when it froze over in the winter? Yes. You skated also, remember? Uh, yes, where did I skate? I went, uh, certain things I don't remember anymore. On the park, in, on the pond in Phoenix Park. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, well, these are minor. You see, I mean, if I must say the uh, skating facilities in Anaheim were better than the ones in. Uh, in Ireland, you see, because Ireland is really too warm a country to uh, support uh, skating. Daddy, you went camping a lot in Ireland, remember, with a caravan and with a tent? Yeah. And do you, do you remember when you were arrested for being a German spy? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was interesting. <laughs> do you want to hear it? Yes, yes. Uh, it was one year, the year when we got married, the year after, we wanted a honeymoon. How can you have a honeymoon? It was war. See? We got married during the war. Honeymoon you can't get away. So uh, my, uh, my wife and I and uh, a friend of mine, Fritz, you see, Fritz Lederer, and so on, we decided to take a tent and take bicycles and go from uh, uh, place to place and whenever we find it's nice, put up our tents and uh, enjoy the scenery and whatever it is. Now this went uh, uh, quite well, went very well because uh, uh, there was no other way, there was no oil for uh, transportation, for buses and so on during the war. Uh, all this was uh, used for other purposes. And uh, there was one night, which I remember, where we uh, uh, tried to put up for the night in Loch Corrib. That's one of the lovely lakes. Uh, of Ireland and in Loch Corrib we put up the tent and we uh, got ready to sleep and we crawled into the tent and uh, s slept you see we were always tired after a day and uh, suddenly we heard murmuring talking and then suddenly somebody opened up the, uh, uh, the door of the tent or whatever this is, you see, and uh, they said, hello, who are you? And so on. He looked out, half sleepy, that's it. And we said something, you see, and something. Ah, these are the Germans, you see. He'll take you. There was a policeman who was out, out there. See? And he had us come up, you see, and uh, get uh, uh, put, put our clothes on, whatever uh, it was necessary to appear respectable, and uh, come out. And he said, Who are you? I said, We are, you think, so and so, and who we are, you see. Um, you are the Nazis. You came yesterday by a plane and landed here. We saw a, a plane landing and two men came out. That was uh, uh, supposed to be my friend and myself. 
you see. And we said, no, we didn't. You didn't. Of course you did. You have a German accent. You see. So uh, he didn't, he didn't let go. No, no, no. I, I Have you any friends here? Yes, I have a friend here. My friend is the vice president here. His name is Antishach, Mr. Norton. You see. Don't, oh, don't tell us any stories. You see. And so on. So I said, why don't you give him a call? No, no, no. So anyhow, we were brought down to the police and uh, then uh, again uh, asking, where do you, what, what is this, whom do you know and so on. We repeated, you see, the vice president of the country, you see, Mr. Norton, that's the thing. I said, uh, why don't you give him a call, you see. So they gave a call, the president, and the president uh, asked, what are the names? The name is Model and Lera. And he, uh, he heard him shout, the president of them, you idiot, let them go, these are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, so we uh, again <laughs> survived that night as many other. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, Go ahead. So, uh, so that's life and we are living here. No, no, you didn't get here that quickly now. I mean, it's now the mid-40s. We're going into the 50s. Um, uh, Garrett is born in 54. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, uh, you're making, you're deciding to make a change. Is that, is that what's happening? Why are you deciding to go to Anaheim, California? I mean, what was happening during the 40s and 50s, uh, as far as life was concerned, your life in Dublin? In the 50s? Oh. I see. I was in, in Dublin. Yes, yes. What was life, life for you like there? How did you enjoy your position as Cantor uh -huh. and as... Uh, Um, is Cantor, is choir director, uh, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, the pleasant things I enjoyed and the under, uh, unpleasant things I didn't enjoy. Tell us some but of the, the things. Best. Tell us some of your memories yeah. from Ireland. Tell us some of your memories of your children growing up, your children being born, your life with Paula there. Mm -hmm. you, you know, this is for the future. Uh -huh. I, I, it's, I know. It's what, among you. What can I tell you? I, uh, my, at the beginning, my father-in-law had a, 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 a leather good factory, yes? And uh, my father-in-law lived also there. You see, Paula's uh, father, mm -hmm. yes, he moved to Ireland. And, uh, and I helped him and I did uh, uh, leather work and designs and whatever it was in order to make a living to aug augment my uh, uh, synagogue salary see? and everything, every bit had to help. Yet I brought up the family and uh, uh, there is not much to be uh, told about it. Did Paula have any brothers or sisters there? Uh, yes, she had. Uh, she had two sisters, and one sister lived in uh, Canada. Yes. After, afterwards, I think it was a little later. She went to Canada. A little later, she went yes. to Canada, and another sister went to Israel. See, of hers. Uh, she lived also in. Yeah, of course, she lived in Dublin. Uh, at first. She lived in Dublin. Vivian lived in Dublin and she moved to uh, Israel where, where she married uh, some years after. So none of the children, none, none of the sisters or brothers, did she have any brothers? No. No. None of the sisters were married at the time when you were married there? Uh, yes. Uh, the sister, uh, Elder sister, uh, Inge. Inge, yes, Inge got married in Dublin. She was married in our house, in fact. I remember this. She married a, a, a 
Israel, a man who was professor at the university, and uh, Vivian was first small, you see her, she had to grow up. She was only born in Dublin, see? and she grew up and eventually uh, uh, went to Israel. And in Israel she married. And she's still marrying, she's still uh, living in Israel in uh, a, a school uh, institution. Okay, so basically your family was your family at that point. Paula's family was just her mother and father. Yeah, yeah. Her sisters moved away. Yeah. But your family was your children. Yeah. And your sisters, of course, your sister was in Leeds. Yeah. Brother was in uh, England also. Yeah. And you did things. Did you go places with your family? Did you travel? I know later in life you did a lot of traveling. Yeah, exactly, yes. In the 40s and early 50s when the children yeah. were of a formative stage. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't uh, did we travel. Yes, yes, we did very much. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, we went to France a lot. Oh, yes, of times. yes, we went to France. We traveled around Ireland a lot. We yeah. went with a caravan, remember? Yeah, that's right, yes. And every Sunday you took us out to the country, climbing in the mountains, Devil's Glen and... Uh, uh, Sugarloaf. Sugarloaf, climbing, yeah. always climbing, walking, forests, yeah. things like this. Thanks, Thanks very much, you see. If you wouldn't have uh, uh, registered this, I would, uh, would, have had, uh, would have forgotten all about it. And then there was Switzerland. <laughs> Switzerland, we went skiing a few times. We went skiing. We went Switzerland. skiing, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So, uh, were you ever uh, were you ever a member of the Irish Olympic you know, skiing team? No. Okay, so you were just a skiing enthusiast. Yeah, yeah. Now you learned it after the war, when you were, you know, already married. Yes. Skiing. I, I you learned to ski after yeah. you were married, or when you were still a young man. Oh, no, I, I skied already in uh, in Germany. I skied in Germany. I remember. You see, not as much as in uh, as uh, here because we have uh, more snow here and more mountains. But I remember having skied in Germany and and skated in Germany on frozen lakes. Yes, that was it. So, uh, but sports was always very close to my heart, and I uh, did a lot, not only in uh, doing my own sport, but teaching sports. You see? And it's probably my talent of being a good teacher, so I was a good teacher not only in Hebrew, but also in uh, uh, other subjects. Now, in Ireland, you didn't do any teaching of sports, did you? It was strictly being a cantor and a choir director. In Ireland, in Dublin. In Dublin. I think, I think so. I think so, yes, 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 yes. Isn't it funny how after many years you forget so many items? You don't remember. I should have had a, a diary and written all these things down. I regret this all my life. It would have made material for a nice book. A lot of books. Yes. So and you did do a lot of traveling then with the children. You went yeah, yes, on yes. a lot of vacations, yeah, skiing, yeah, 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 caravanning, yeah, yeah. camping, etc. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know the world quite well, you see. I've gotten around and uh, seen I should say perhaps most of the countries. Okay, they, but that's later. That's later. That's later. That's later. Okay, 19, in the 1950s. Yeah. When did you decide that you were going to leave Dublin and why? Ah. Spirit of adventure. I had been in Dublin quite a number of years. And I had the feeling, that's it. You have stayed long enough in Dublin, 19 years. <coughs> I mean, any American would have done this after 19 years. So I uh, came to uh, 
to America. And I went first to the uh, theological seminary in New York and uh, was offered a position there. But I said, no, I want to go to the Golden Medina, see, to California. And uh, so I eventually I ended up here in California after. Uh, now you just left Dublin yes. with your family? I left Dublin with my family, sure. Yes. And you just picked up? Just picked without up, a job. Picked up and said, that's it, I've had enough. Besides, I must admit that I saw the Jewish population of Dublin and the whole attitude uh, of a Jewish community dwindling more and more and more and more. And if you think today, when I came to Dublin, Dublin had 5,000 Jews. Dublin today has hardly 2,000, which is already a sign that uh, things don't uh, look very futuristic. That changed. And uh, so that's it, so I, I came here. So you came out to California, but you knew there was a job opening here? No. No. I didn't know anything. I just wanted to go to California, and I came to, I said I came in New York, I went to the seminary, the theological seminary in California. I went to the uh, University of Judaism, and uh, Rabbi Vosban was then the president. And he said, yes, we have a job for you. You can go either to Yuma, to another border town somewhere, you see? Valley somewhere. No. Kohenga. No, no, no. Or to Anaheim, you see? Why don't you go and see and have a look at them and choose whatever you want to? So I spent one Shabbos here and one Shabbos there and one Shabbos in uh, Shula Vista. Did I mention this? No, but that's a border town. Yeah. San Diego. In Shula Vista, yes. In Shula Vista, where they needed an uh, uh, assistant rabbi. You see, they didn't have a rabbi at all. But that, as an assistant rabbi, uh, anything will do, even you will. <laughs> So I, uh, I, then I came to Anaheim, and, I, and afterwards I couldn't make up my mind. What should I do with all these places? You see, they were all very nice, but this is me. And I went to um, uh, Max Wasper again, and I asked him, what should I do? I have these choices, and I can't make up my mind. And he said, if you want to listen to me, go to Anaheim. Because Anaheim, of all the cities I mentioned, has the largest, the greatest future to settle down for a permanent position. And I listened to Bosbahn, uh, and here I am, and I'm still here after 36 years. Okay, this was 1958? Yeah. Okay, uh, you came here, Rabbi Tofield was here at that time. Yes. Okay, and... Uh, Thanks for the Rabbi Tofield for that. Okay, and, and then there was the small group of original, uh, you know, people who started the temple on Emily Street. Was it on Emily Street where on it started? Emily Street, yes.